Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Tanner here and welcome to a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the history of Bionicle, surprising enough, and what Ninjago did differently and why I would say Ninjago did a better job at encapsulating an audience than Bionicle did. Now, of course, if you guys have been following me pretty much on anything else besides YouTube, you would know that I am pretty much a Bionicle fan. In case you guys didn't know, I've been following Bionicle as much as I can. I mean, I was kind of into Lego as soon as the original run of Bionicle was just wrapping up, so it's not like I was there for the original generation all that much, but I have been exposed lately to some of the older Bionicle content, and I do own every set from the Bionicle reboot because I was big into collecting that when it came out around 2015. I have every set from the 2015 to 2016 era until Bionicle was unceremoniously cancelled again by LEGO, and that's the biggest thing between Bionicle and Ninjago. A lot of people see Ninjago as this day's Bionicle, the Bionicle for the next generation of LEGO fans, this current generation. I was a bit too young to kind of be sucked into that original run of Bionicle, but I was right on time for Ninjago, and in a lot of ways Ninjago is my Bionicle. And I do need to preface this video by saying that I do not hate Bionicle. Like I said, I'm a fan. I collect some of the sets, both old and new, so obviously I'm not saying anything out against Bionicle. What I am saying though is that Ninjago did this concept a lot better in that it appealed towards a larger audience. Now what was cool about Bionicle was that at the time that it came out, you know, early 2001 to 2010, there wasn't really anything else like it. Bionicle itself, in a lot of ways, kind of saved LEGO from bankruptcy, and in a lot of ways, it stood the test of time. Bionicle was ahead of its time. I've heard that phrase several times throughout my run in the LEGO community, and it's true. But what Bionicle was kind of, I guess, lacking was that type of door to more fans. In a lot of ways, Bionicle, as it kept going, it kept on getting more and more complex, the storyline just kept on going, and in a lot of ways, it kind of alienated new people. Like myself, going back to visit older Bionicle, I kind of feel like I'm not getting everything. I wasn't there from the beginning like I was for Ninjago, and it's a lot easier nowadays for a new Ninjago fan to just hop into the series wherever. And that's where I think Ninjago kind of shines above Bionicle. Ninjago is accessible to everyone, and some might view that as a weakness, some might view Bionicle's complexity to be its charm, some might feel like its storytelling is one of its best aspects and it's superior to Ninjago in that sense. And I do agree that Bionicle's storyline is very impressive, it's very complicated, and the actual world and lore surrounding Bionicle is insane, but at the same time, Ninjago's lore is kind of complex as well, and you don't see Ninjago having the same issues that Bionicle did. Ninjago's lore is not as complex as Bionicle, but it still is very detailed for a LEGO theme. You wouldn't really expect a complicated storyline like Ninjago to be part of like a mainline LEGO theme meant for a younger audience, but it is, and that's what's kept a lot of us fans around too, and it's also what's kept the door open for more fans to come in and appreciate Ninjago. In the modern day, Ninjago itself is just more accessible, and that's again where Ninjago shines over Bionicle. There's a reason why Ninjago kind of outlived Bionicle too. Bionicle was eventually cancelled because of just how complex it was getting, and just how much it kind of deviated itself from every other LEGO theme, and became this exclusive club for fans that have only been around since the beginning. Ninjago's not like that. Ninjago just celebrated its 10th anniversary, which is not something that Bionicle was able to do during its original run. Of course, it was brought back for a little bit of a reboot until it was cancelled again, and I feel like that's just because the modern era does not really enjoy Bionicle as much as they did all the way back then, and that's just because the modern day LEGO fan prefers Ninjago and other themes to Bionicle. Bionicle, when it came back in 2015, had a lot of competition, especially from Ninjago. Ninjago had been around for a long time at that point, and 2015 was arguably Ninjago's strongest year, with both Tournament and Possession coming out, kind of shadowing a bunch of other LEGO themes into obscurity like Bionicle. Bionicle's reboot was very good in my opinion, and I liked a lot of things about it, I loved a lot of the sets, again I own every set, so obviously Bionicle's reboot meant something to me, but for the average LEGO fan it really didn't, and that's why I feel like Ninjago does its overall thing a lot better than Bionicle. Ninjago creates a complicated storyline while also leaving it accessible to other people that are just joining in. If if you were to join the Ninjago fandom nowadays, you would have an easier time adapting to the series because unlike Bionicle, Ninjago didn't change out its roster of main characters every couple of years. It kept things consistent in the realm of Ninjago with only a couple of things changing here and there to keep the theme fresh. And overall, that formula nowadays works a lot better than if Bionicle were to come back. And I feel like that's why Bionicle's reboot was kind of weak. Again, I'm a fan of both series. I love Ninjago. I love Bionicle. But at the same time, I gotta admit that Bionicle just isn't for the modern day. Bionicle was ahead of its time but now its time has kind of passed. Ninjago's on the scene now, Ninjago's been doing things a lot better, and overall just providing a lot of doors for newer fans, and they don't really have a habit of alienating the fan base. The LEGO fan base is very invested in Ninjago, whether you're a fan of the show, the sets, the actual merchandise that comes along.
along with it and just the characters it's just a lot more accessible for the modern day and I feel like that's why Ninjago is doing things a lot better than Bionicle did. But overall my message is just that Ninjago has been doing a better job at maintaining a fan base and keeping things consistent while also keeping a fresh identity over the course of its run. There's a reason why Ninjago has gone on for as long as it has and again in a lot of ways it is like the modern day Bionicle so I guess that's pretty much going to wrap it up for my thoughts. Again I don't hate Bionicle, I don't hate Ninjago, I love both of them but Ninjago I do have to admit is doing things just a tiny bit better than Bionicle did. Just my opinion and now I want to it over to you guys leave a comment down below talking about what strengths the ninjago has that bionicle doesn't and maybe if you guys are a bionicle fans maybe leave a couple of bionicle strengths that ninjago doesn't quite encapsulate leave all your thoughts down below in the comments and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you did feel free to like comment subscribe do all that fun stuff and check out the links down below in the description from other forms of social media as always big shout out goes out to my patreon supporters including once again the marvelous jan thank you guys so much for watching this video once again my name is tanner fishies and with that i bid you farewell mm -hmm.